As the sun rose that morning, so did I from my sentinel spot in bed. The chill that was in the air all that night quickly disappeared and was replaced by the warmth one would expect of an early July morning. I gathered myself and slowly made my way out of the bedroom and through the kitchen, staggered past the already percolating coffee pot out to the sitting room where the couch was. I hoped Steph would assume I had another rough night, tiptoe past me, and let me catch up on some sleep. As I closed my eyes, I reflected. I could accept that the chill might be caused by some error with an ancient furnace or ventilation system, but the blanket and sheets being ripped from the bed and deposited across the room bothered me. It bothered me in an entirely different way and was my lone thought as I drifted off to sleep. I woke up sometime after 9 a.m., and went about looking for Steph. I found her busy in the kitchen, unboxing pots, pans, plates, cups, and other utensils, placing them in their new homes. I settled down at the nook with a cup of coffee. I thought she was mad at me at first, not acknowledging my presence for a few minutes. Then I realized she seemed to be moving odd. One step back, two steps forward, two steps back, one step forward, arms being controlled by unseen puppet strings, like she wasn't truly in control of her own body. She had her AirPods in. A concert in her head only she could hear, and was so wrapped up in her task, she didn't see or hear me enter. The yelp she let out when she finally saw her audience of one watching her from the nook would have been comical if I hadn't spent the last two nights wide awake. She let out an embarrassed laugh and, as she collected herself, then asked when I had woke up and if I had another chilly night. I took my last gulp of coffee and then made my way across the kitchen to pour myself another cup as I told her what happened. Awaking to the frosty chill, the sheets and blanket found across the room, and then the noise, the rhythmic percussion emanating from somewhere in the house. She listened and took it in as she continued unboxing, placing plates and bowls in the cabinet. She reminded me that the repairman would be coming in a few days, and she would reach out to him later today to see if an earlier spot had perhaps opened. As for the sheets and blankets... She offered an easy explanation. She explained that maybe one of us had gotten overheated and tossed them off in frustration, and since we were both so exhausted, we did so while asleep on our feet. I had to admit this explanation seemed most likely. Both of us tired, stressed over a big move, the unloading and unboxing, and the constant pressure of the mounting tasks ahead. Starting a new business in a new place, sleeping in an unfamiliar place, for at least one of us. It did feel logical. That third night, though. It wasn't the chill that woke me this time, although the crisp, cold air was all enveloping in the bedroom. Goosebumps visible on my arms and torso, the sheets and blanket again missing from anywhere on top of the bed. I searched the room in the moonlight, my eyes scanning. Not for the sheets and blanket, though, no. But for the source of the feeling. The feeling that I couldn't shake. The feeling that brought me awake. The feeling that something or someone else was there. In the room. Watching. I reached across to the nightstand and tapped my cell phone, 2.33 a.m. I then activated the cell phone flashlight and worked the beam back and forth across the room. No one. Nothing was there. I arose from my bed and started to walk around the room, looking in the closet, under the bed, behind the boxes piled in the one corner. I checked the window latch. It was still secure. There was no one here, but myself and Steph. I had checked every inch, 
and yet I could not shake the feeling that we were not alone. I walked slowly back to the bed, working the flashlight back and forth as I walked, constantly scanning, constantly looking, and as I reached my hand to my wife's shoulder to gently shake her awake, feeling like a foolish child looking for the comfort of a parent awoken from a dream or a nightmare, the bedroom door swung violently open, impacting the wall, and then the banging. Thwack! 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 I dashed from the room, not out of fear, but to catch whomever had wrenched the door open with such force and would now be surely running from the home. The kitchen was empty. Nothing was disturbed, as well as the sitting room, the laundry, the bathrooms, the closet, the study, the pantry, the dining room, the foyer, all empty, nothing amiss, the front and rear door still locked and bolted shut. I proceeded to the second floor, checked each of the rooms, turning on every light, checking every closet and hallway, not leaving one inch unsecured. And after an hour, I found I was the only person awake in the house. And the only thing to keep me company was the constant thwack, thwack, thwack.